Let's go through and launch an AWS Spot instance. First, we'll set up a Cloud9 environment, and then I'll go to the console, and in this console, I'll tell the Spot request mechanism to launch a new instance. What this does is allows us to effectively bid on the machine, get a machine that's, let's say, 90% off, we'll say 90% off, and then once it's launched, I can SSH via the Cloud9 environment. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll launch an AWS Cloud9 instance. So I'll find Cloud9, and I'll go through here and say create environment. And in this environment, I'll call this um, spot connector, and I'll leave everything default here, and again, leave everything default and launch this. What's useful about this Cloud9 environment for connecting to spot instances is that I could upload my PIM file and then I could launch multiple spot instances over and over again once I've set that up. So this is really the, the, the launching off station. Great, so now that that's set up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch the spot instances via the AWS spot request. So I'll go over to spot request in the EC2 uh, console. And what I'll say is request spot instance. From here, I'll go ahead and select one of these. Uh, it really doesn't particularly matter, but let's say big data workload. Um, and let's go through some of the key highlights of the spot interface. First, if you wanted to automate components of this, you could launch it via a template. Uh, if you want to select a particular AMI, so in this case, the default is Amazon Linux, the newest version of Linux, Linux. but I also could select, let's say, a deep learning AMI. If you're gonna do TensorFlow or you know, some other deep learning framework, this might be a good choice. Or if you wanted to go to Ubuntu, uh, even Windows or Red Hat, there's lots of different options here for AMIs or your own custom AMI. And AMI stands for Amazon uh, Machine Image. So you can pre-configure it as well and that's a useful way to get a head start on your spot instance. Uh, in terms of networking, I'll leave everything default here. And the other thing that's really important is this key pair name section. Uh, so in my particular uh, situation, what I'll do is I'll create a new key pair, and then I'll say create key pair, and we'll call this um, spot connector. And this will allow me to SSH into this uh, interface uh, again multiple times. So now that I've downloaded that, I'm gonna go back to my uh, AWS Cloud9 environment here, which should be waking up here in a second. Now that it's woken up, what I can do is I can say file, and I can upload that PIM file. So I'll go ahead and select that PIM file, there we go. Spot, connector, great. Now that it's there, uh, it's ready for me to later connect to the spot instance. So if I go back again to my EC2 console and I refresh, let's see if I can find that spot connector. There we go. And that's going to allow me to make the connection. So this is an easy mistake that, that it's uh, a first timer could make is you forget to uh, create a key pair and then you can never SSH into your, your machine and then really it doesn't do anything for you. So the other thing that's important is if I go to additional configuration, this is also a common mistake is you can set storage, you can do all kinds of things, but typically the security group here is a very common mistake. Uh, and what happens is that you need to create a specific security group that allows you to connect. By default, nothing is open. So even SSH is not open. So how do we do this? Well, we can do the same thing. We can say create new security group. And I'm gonna go through here and say create security group. I'll do the same thing. I'll call this spot connect. And we can say um, allows SSH access to spot instances. There we go. And now that I've got this set up uh, and I, I need to set the inbound rule. So I'll say add rule and we'll go through here and change this to uh, a custom TCP port uh, and in our case, we'll say it's going to be port uh, 22. And we'll also allow it 
to access every single outside resource. I could, for security purposes, specifically assign it to my Cloud9 instance, and that would be even more secure. But for now, this is a reasonable uh, security trade-off. Now that I've done that, uh, I can go through here and say, create security group. And now that I've got that security group created, if I go back here and I go to a refresh, we should be able to see a um, spot connect here. There we go, spot connect, and I'll go ahead and select that. So even if you create the security group, if you forget to connect it, then you'll be very frustrated that you can't open up uh, port 22. Uh, and again, this is one of the most common mistakes. Uh, finally, probably a third common mistake is that if you want to access an API, let's say uh, Amazon Recognition or Comprehend or some kind of AI API, you have to set up an IAM role. And so you could do the same thing. You could go through here, create an IAM role, and then when the machine launches, it can make those calls on your behalf. If you don't need those calls, then you don't need to set up an IAM role, but this is a very, very common mistake as well. So those are the three big mistakes that I see. Finally, this user data section would be if you wanted to pre-configure some commands like, let's say, mount the Elastic file system, this could be a reasonable place to put those commands. All right, now that I've got that set up, uh, I need to tell them how much capacity I need. I just want one instance, and uh, I'll do a fleet request as well. And the fleet request, all it means is that it's almost like um, you're making a request for uh, a hotel room, and you'll you'll say, I want a hotel room that has a king bed, and uh, I want to pay 70% off. It's kind of the same thing. It doesn't necessarily matter which room you're in. You just want a deal. So in this case, you can see these are all pretty good priced, and you'll get one of these. All right, now that I go through and I scroll down here, you can see that uh, the estimated savings would be about 72%, and there's nine different types of instances I can choose from. So let's go ahead and launch this. Now, once you submit the request, it'll be in the submit state here. And what you can do to find out what's happening is you can actually click on it, and it'll show you whether it's pending fulfillment or fulfilled. So we can see this is in pending fulfillment. And then if I go to instances here, uh, what you'll see is that the instance is in pending state, right? So it hasn't been launched yet. So uh, what I can do here is I can select this and I can say um, spot connector spot, right? I can name it. And this is often a great idea is to give it a name so that you don't later get confused about what's happening uh, when you're launching your instance. Uh, it's very common to not know which instances are doing what, right? So I could go through here again and, and we'll say spot connector and, and just make sure that it's got a name that uh, is going to allow me to know what it is. Okay, great. We see that it's running and it tells us what the type is. So if I select this, uh, you can see that it's it's uh, getting booted up, right? So it's it's pretty much ready to go with in a couple minutes or so. And so what we can do to connect to it is select this connect icon and it'll actually give us a, a set of instructions. So the first thing it's gonna say is I need to run this chmod 400 command to that PIM file. So I'm gonna go back to spot instance uh, virtual machine here in Cloud9 and I'm going to uh, run this command, chmod 400. So this allows the correct Unix permission level to be set so that I can actually make this SSH connection. Great, now if I go back to the, the next series of instructions, it says SSH-I spot connector, and then EC2 user at, and then it shows me the address. So it, it gives me exactly the command to SSH into the machine. So if we go back to Cloud9 here and I run that, you can see that it looks like it's working. It's been able to make an initial handshake. So we know that the security groups work. And if I say yes, there we go. Now I'm in Amazon Linux 2. Remember the host here was Amazon Linux 1. So I'm in a totally different uh, machine. So I could go through here and say sudo you know, yum uh, update or you know, whatever command I wanted to run here uh, and, and go through and do my my commands, or if I wanted to run Python, or, or whatever it is that I needed to do, I have a sandbox environment to play around with. So that's really the key takeaway, 
that uh, many people you know, really should be aware of when you're using spot instances is they're an incredible cost savings and they're great for prototyping code. And if you're doing deep learning, the deep learning instances can be great as well. So how do we clean up our job here? The next thing that I can do is if I go back to uh, this environment here, uh, I can go to EC2 and go to spot requests. And this is typically the best way to clean it up is go to your um, spot request here, select it and say cancel request. Notice that you want to leave this selected, terminate instances. So if I don't select this, it'll relaunch the spot instance again. Uh, and so I wanna terminate not just the instance, but the request itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. There we go. And you see it's, it's being canceled. I can uh, verify this by going to instance. And if I go to instance, you can see it's shutting down. And if I go back to cloud nine, you'll see, uh-oh, it's been closed, right? So in a nutshell, uh, very easy to use spot instances once you know some of those gotchas that we went over. If I wanna get rid of my cloud nine instance as well, all I have to do is uh, close it and it'll go away because it automatically